So yeah, basically I was looking at um, Morris Dance and a guy in a pub, I was hanging, or went to interview him. Oh, he basically poo-pooed all my theories, but he told me about <laughs> something called the uh, Irish Navi shoveling technique. And Irish Navi, Navi was just an excavator, and I don't think there was actually much of a difference between Irish and British The Navi. Irish Navi shoveling, shoveling technique. technique. It sounds like something out of a Guy Ritchie film, I, I know. have to say. <laughs> <laughs> but all he knew about it was that basically, you know, it was this idea that they would sort of dig in, and then they would sort of settle. And, Do you want to move back yeah. so they can see? There we go. So it would, uh, and well, he didn't have, he didn't really demonstrate the idea. They, they would just set the shovel, and they would kind of almost sink, and the shovel would just pop up, and the load okay. of dirt would go like whoo, up in the air. So, like putting the the body weight in, kind of, yeah, as a as a leverage to maybe. I have to say, as as a former archaeologist, I hate shoveling and I suck at shoveling. I, I did I, it for a while too. I did some excavating yeah, in, the, in the late 90s. It hurts. It really gets nice. you in there. It gets you in the back. Um, for any of you out there who have to shovel for a living, I'm sure you're much <laughs> tougher and stronger than, than we are. <laughs> well, the closest I could figure out, because um, the English spade has a T handle, yeah. and everyone just basically uses it to push straight. Yeah. But if you look at um, and then like like palm up, yeah, as a so that would be supination, wouldn't it? It depends. I oh. think. Oh, I, don't, I haven't actually looked at the that so much yet. It's basically just the it's putting you into the counter rotation. That's what I'm going to go to. So if you look at a, a scythe, you know how they have the handle sticking off. You know, yeah. Why do you have the handle? Why not yeah. just use it? Because the handle goes at the right angle and it lets you push into the stick with that structure of having the elbow in. You know, like that as opposed to like that okay. which sucks so you get all that power so having the t-handle on the spade lets you push that way with that great kind of you know like thrusting power so the theory is you dig in like that and then it's you supinate and pronate at the same time sides don't agree for this shoveling technique okay again theoretically so the great point of that is that it lets you do this. One goes one direction, one goes the other way, and yeah. you rotate around a central point. It's a lever. Yeah. Yeah. So you're basically, you know, here, and then you can do that to get the load off. Uh -huh. yeah. So that's why you're trying to imagine there's a T-shaped thing yeah. here. So that, and then what that does is it puts you really low. You're doing that, basically. Um, the, and your hips are actually do some more work on it but the French shoveling technique seems to be and this is from looking at archival footage and stuff you've got the hips squared towards the target and you're actually doing both sides agree so let's so you guys can hear us better when we close up the camera right. sorry about any um, wind background noise but you know we're in a park in Salisbury um, and we have and no it's shovels really cold it's about one degree which for me is Almost freezing. I was going to say it's freezing, but it's almost freezing. Um, so what we got to talking about here, again, this relates to Jim's uh, supination and pronation body mechanics stuff. What, what's the proper terminology? For I don't really know yet. Okay. I'm still working on it. There's lots of people who look at the stuff from different angles with different agendas and often okay. different um, paid access systems. Okay. <laughs> so and so Jim it. mentioned that uh, in World War One, um, mm. it was noted that. French soldiers and British soldiers uh, were used to a different type of shoveling uh, and French shovels at the time were usually a long pole with a with a shovel scoop at the other end whereas British shovels as as I'm used to as I've grown up with have a, a, a t-shaped bar at the back end and this leads to a very different style of, uh, of leverage I suppose yeah there's not a lot of Problem is, not a lot of people wanted to spend the money on the film stock to sh film somebody <laughs> shoveling <laughs> <and> <laughs> shit. Yeah. So it's a pretty rare thing. We've got the only example I found. I mean, some anecdotal things. There's a really good one of a guy shoveling coal in Newcastle. It's on his knees, but he does something yeah. real interesting where he he does. You're off the camera. Oh, there. Hold the camera. on, I'll tilt okay. it down. There we go. As I get my there we go. <laughs> but it's really weird because he he faces forward and then he kind of shovels off to the side, but he doesn't turn his body. He really keeps it straight in, so it's okay. almost like you know. So in a sense, you're using. He's using the back. You're conserving your back yep. in a way as well, though, aren't you? Because if you were twisting, that's right. Then you're using kind of more. Pressure. Yeah. But you are definitely getting the power from the back. And but then it also seems like that's using the arms more. It, um, I mean, it, oh, where do the arms start and the back begin? I'm not too sure yet. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. 
And is he using the counter rotation? But if There's you, lots of questions. If you would just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, you but know, do you think this has? So you mentioned about this having some relationship to bayonet. Ah, well, yeah. this is it. So here's the the British thing. You're kind of doing one up, one down. Yeah. Like so so the British are used to having the hand this way at the back, and and using this type of motion, whereas the French shovel is more how you would hold the rifle. Exactly. And they come back, they, what they do is they short like that. So you say, are you saying... And then they you... lean back on the, the okay. link, because we don't have a, it should be this much longer. So they're basically, yeah, they, they do that, and the hips are a bit more forward right. when they do it. So they actually, you can see my feet, but you can't. You can see uh, you bringing that in, a bit more, which again is a bit more bayonetti, I think. Although I have to look at the old exercises. So yeah, they're kind of coming in like that, getting it, and then doing it that way, as opposed to yeah. Or they really get the is this going? Is this just a Canadian plot to describe how French is superior to, to British? Is this a conspiracy? <laughs> hey, I'm from Ontario. Back <laughs> <laughs> Quebec, but. <laughs> so something interesting I've noticed, so if we go back to 19th century, so my specialism of bayonet, most people, so say this is this is our yep. firearm and we're used to using it like this, uh, in, by the later, we'll say by the middle of the 19th century, it was completely normal, I notice I've bent down on my knees now, you're going to sabre stance, right. for you to use your bayonet uh, this way, on the same side as you'd shoot, so you can shoot and you're immediately ready to stab uh, anyway from this side and you'd keep your hand in the same place. Mm. If we go back to Anthony Gordon's uh, manual of 1805, I think it is, um, he was not using it this way, he was gripping the butt, uh, okay, and the hand would go on right. the butt like this, which funnily enough is closer to the shovel, oh, yeah. shovel thing right. that we're talking about. But the reason that he does that is because it gains extra reach against other people using bayonets so you're using the maximum possible reach of the uh, of the musket as it was in his time rather than a rifle um and uh, so against cavalrymen but equally against other other infantrymen but also as aside from just doing that he also switched sides to gain uh, to gain a um advantageous leverage i have spoken about this before in a video i did when i was at uh, the battle of waterloo uh, you can search that on my videos, just type in Waterloo. Um, and, uh, but interestingly, when he's fighting against cavalry, he shows it back on this side and we don't know why. Um, but anyway, it was kind of experimental. Uh, but Ben Miller's done some interesting work um, on uh, researching uh, Anthony Gordon. He's, so look up Ben Miller's work on Anthony Gordon, very interesting stuff as well. But the reason, more or less, that this type of grip was abandoned, despite the fact you gain extra reach from it, is first of all it means that if you're primarily shooting with your firearm as you would be okay so you're going around with a loaded gun um, and if someone suddenly attacks you springs out of a doorway you need to be ready to use your bayonet in whatever way you can okay um, whereas if you have to switch grip if you've been changed to switch grip ah i'm being attacked uh boom quickly change grip well, that's a nuisance firstly um, secondly also holding it here is far less secure you can't the weapons quite unwieldy because remember this is an eight or nine or ten pound weapon this is a large heavy musket it's not a spear it's a heavy heavy firearm and if you're holding it like this kind of so near the back it becomes unbalanced you're not holding it near the balance point anymore the balance point of a firearm is up there where the left hand normally goes if you move both the hands back then the balance goes off right. Um, and if someone comes in, in later Victorian style, holding it how you'd normally hold a gun, um, then essentially they can outfence you, not necessarily with reach, because you can outreach them, but with leverage. So And butt, you can butt me. And, and you can hit with a butt, exactly. Very, very good point. So if a person with a sword, for example, knocks your point offline and charges in, you can still hit them with the butt or push them away to then get them into stabbing range. So. Um, <laughs> we should do this with shovels sometimes. Yeah, so there we go. So it makes more sense. Shovels, World War One, digging, tea handles, <laughs> and bayonets. Marcel and Mouse Anthony is actually Gordon. the guy who. Marcel Mouse is the guy who wrote about it. Marcel Mouse, Henry Angelo, Anthony Gordon, 
all in one video and I didn't mention Burton. Oh, I did now. Except Burton, <laughs> Burton also says you should do it on both sides to get the full exercise value. So switching that to that is also a kind of therapeutic thing, I think. Okay. Too. And interestingly, in cutlass, later cutlass exercise, they tell you a load of drills to do with the right hand and then they tell you to do it, all the sailors oh, yeah. to do it with their left oh, hand. You should as do well, everything so. with both or your body's going to... Interestingly, the reason they give is, is if you're fighting away and you get... Uh, wounded in your right arm, disabled, then you can switch to the left hand and carry on fighting in a kind of Errol Flynn fashion. <laughs> kind of anyway. There's a much more boring modern interpretation which is just if you get an imbalance on your muscles. For balance, yeah, yeah, equilibrium yeah, exactly. and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. Shovels <laughs> and bayonet in one video. You never thought you'd see it, but you have now. With no shovels and no bayonets. <laughs> yeah, and with no shovels and no bayonets. It just shows what you can do in an English park on a, on a very cold we'll Friday afternoon. Cheers, folks. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We have extra videos on Patreon, and you can follow us on Facebook.